Hey everyone, National Master Shang Lei here. In today's chess video, I'm going to be talking to you about one of the biggest chess controversies to have ever hit the chess community. And that topic today is of course that of Dua Kibas, the ch uh, Indonesian chess pro who has been supposedly banned and caught cheating when he played Gotham Chess. Now, a couple of days ago, Gotham Chess decided to play against Dua Kipas, somebody who he supposed was cheating based off his chess history. Now, when he played him, there was some suspicious things going on, especially when it came to very forced moves that was placed during the match, but took an awfully long time for someone of his strength and caliber. Now, Dua Kipas ended up finishing off Gotham Chess extremely, extremely easily, but um, not long after that, he was supposedly banned. Now, a lot of people, a lot of fans of Dua Kipas supposedly believe that Gotham Chess got him banned due to his connections with the Chess.com um, staff. Now, of course, that's not what happened, but supposedly what happened was that Chess.com's auto mod and auto bots um, banned him based off his play and his suspicious play and basically decided that he was a cheater. Now, after that, uh, Dua Kipas' son, as well as a lot of Indonesian fans, decided to get a lot, like, riled up. And, and they all came together and they sponsored a match between him and Arain Sukandar, a very strong GM from Indonesia. And so what happened after that was Dua Kipas, not surprisingly, lost 3-0 against a super strong GM. And so some people still believe after that that Dua Kipas is just a very strong chess player and of course can't be really, you know, paired up with the strong GMs. But you ran, if when you ran his moves under the computer engine, his moves came up around 30% accuracy when his chess.com moves all showed 99.9 .9 or 99.1, 99.6 and very high percentage uh, percentages um, against other people. Now, of course, Chess.com's uh, auto ban people aren't always correct. There's been cases in the past in which they ban people for no reason and accidents do happen. But what do you guys think about what happened? And let me show you the game that is not really shown um, very much. And that's the game that's played between Dua Kipas and Gotham Chess. Instead of the games between Irene Sukandar and him, because those games, uh, not gonna lie, was kind of a massacre. But this game, on the other hand, was a massacre of the opposite kind. So let us start with a game that is actually less commonly known, and that's the game between Gotham Chess and Dua Kipas. And it what kind of solidifies the idea for me about whether or not he was cheater or not. And this game, Gotham Chess was, well, basically massacred um, against this very, very, very suspicious player over here. Gotham Chess was playing white, and on the black side is Dua Kipas. And so in this position, d4 was played, knight of 6 was played, and after knight of 6, knight of 3, e6, g3, and b6. Now, I know this isn't the Queen's Indian, supposedly, but it reminds me of a Queen's Indian setup. The only difference is there's no pawn on c4. And the idea of this uh, pawn structure is that we're going to be trying to attack the d4 pawn using moves like pawn c5 while having a very strong bishop over here. Now, Gotham's chess strategy is pretty good against a computer, or a cheater, and that's he's just trying to play very solid. And so bishop g2, bishop b7, this is all very well-known theory. b3, trying to get the bishop on b2, and now captures, captures, knight c6, and e3. Now, so far, it doesn't look too suspicious. Anybody could have played moves like these. I could have played moves like these. But what was suspicious is how he spent 10 seconds on every single move to get to this point. Now, if you are a very strong player, usually you're able to play the openings extremely fast. In fact, one of my most recent videos talked about that. If you're strong, you would know your opening repertoire and, you know, your moves wouldn't take the same amount after every move. That just leads to some suspicious, uh, suspicions to be lied here. And so after e3, bishop a6 is a very strong move. It's trying to take advantage of these weak light squares that white has. And white promptly moves the rook, and black plays d5. Bishop to f1, trying to trade off the very strong bishop for white's okay bishop over here. And that's what happens. King takes f1, and now knight to e4. Black is able to solidify a very strong knight in the position. King back to g2, rook to c8, and now pawn to a3. The problem with moving the knight now is that it does allow moves like knight b4, and that does get very annoying um, for the black side in this position. There might be some discovered attacks in the future as well, so you can't really move the knight. And if you move it to d2, your opponent can easily play f5, basically saying you're not going to capture me, otherwise I get an open f-file over here. 
And so after rook c8, a3 was played, stopping knight b4, and then knight a5 is played. This is one of those um, very strong moves, because what it does is tries to pressure the weakness. If you play pawn b4, well, your opponent gets this very strong c4 um, square over here, and your opponent has a light square um, blockade over here. The light squares are all his, and Gotham chess is left with a terrible bishop on b2, so that's no good. Queen d3 is played, probably a move I would have played, very nice move, defending here, planning to move the knight. f5, knight d2, now g5. Now g5, again, a very simple idea, trying to kick the knight away so that when we kick the knight, we can take the knight over here, and when queen captures, we can fork the queen and rook together, and that would be game over. Rook b1 is played, because there's really no other good way to defend this. If you decide to play b4, again, the same problem lies. Your light squares absolutely are terrible, atrocious, and they collapse, and that's no good. And so rook to b1 is played, pawn to g4 attacking that knight, the knight goes forward, and now white gets a very strong knight. But the problem is, his position is kind of cramped, it's kind of squished, and the bishops are the main issue. This bishop is so good compared to this terrible bishop over here. How we know if a bishop is good or not? Look at the pawns. Most of these pawns are on light squares, and he has a dark square bishop, that's good for him. Most of Gotham's chess um, pawns are on dark squares, but his bishop is also on dark square. That's no good as well. Knight takes knight, queen takes knight, and now the pawn is won on b3. Queen to d3, knight to a5, and white's trying to go for some counterplay on the king side, but this ends up just weakening his king. So after all these captured, Gotham Chess is trying to checkmate on h7, but after 10 seconds, which is again very suspicious for a simple move like rook c7, just trying to defend over here, rook c7 is played. And so in this position, white is already completely lost. He's down a pawn, has a terrible mind of peace, and black has an attack. Excuse me. And so after rook c7 is played, bishop to d4, just trying to close things up, but it's too little, too late. Black's queen comes into the game, and black's knights comes into the game, and black's pieces all come into the game. And now after this queen check over here, king goes back to g2, and now this very amazing rook f5. Gotham Chess's idea here was to play rook f6, and the idea of rook f6 is very simple. We're going to block the rooks from invading over here. However, rook f5 completely sidesteps that and says, nope, if you play this, I might just play rook over here, and that's checkmate on h1. He has foiled him once again. Now, I am no genius over here, but uh, the Gotham Chess is an extremely strong chess player, and he's way better than me, that's for sure. And him and having all his plans basically read out like a book over here, um, it is awfully suspicious. Um, so rook f5, and then knight takes e5 after again another 10 seconds. And if you take 10 seconds to find rook c7 defending against a simple threat, and you only spend 10 seconds finding such a complicated move that is knight takes e5, hate to spell it to you guys, but there is something suspicious happening right now. Rook takes rook, knight to f3 check, and here Gotham actually plays for a very nice move, and I probably would have fallen for this trick. He just, he just decides to sacrifice the queen. And the idea here is that, well, if you decide to capture over here with your rook or a pawn, it doesn't really matter because now you're actually getting, well, mated over here, or losing a lot of material, because king is forced to go here, and you actually lose the rook over here, the queen over here, because of this discovered attack. That's actually amazing, I would have fallen for this, I would have just captured back and, uh, and ultimately collapsed. I know most of you guys would have too, don't lie. And so the computer found this very nice in-between move first, saying, okay, I check you. Gotham was forced to move here because if he moves over here, this rook h4 check and that leads to mate again. And so king g2, pawn cap just mate and it doesn't take a genius, though it did require this person to take quite a long time, to basically find the win, which was essentially um, queen to h1 check and white resigned here. And the reason why it resigned is because it's a very simple checkmate. Coming up is king over here and queen h5 is mate. So, what do you guys think happened in this game? Um, do you think um, Black cheated here, or do you think he was just awfully good and wasn't and was just having a terrible day when he played against Irene Sukandar and got 3 0 Tell me in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this content, press like and subscribe. And if you want more enjoyable content like this one, tell me in the comment section below. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.